This is the second video in cost behavior and cost volume profit. In this one, we're only going to look at learning objective number three. We're going to look at mixed costs. And what are mixed costs and how do we work with them? A mixed cost is a cost that has both a variable cost element and a fixed cost element as part of its cost structure. That is, this cost will change when we increase the level of activity, but it will not increase or change in direct proportion to the level of activity. It's not fixed because it's changed. So it's a variable cost, but it doesn't change in direct proportion, so it's not completely variable. And it's not a fixed cost because it does change. For example, here now we have a company that is, has cost at two levels, 10,000 units and 20,000 units. Now, when you look at the cost direct material, it is 20,000 at 10,000 units. When I double production, the cost double, so it's completely variable. When you look at maintenance, it was $8,000 at 10,000 units. It changed, it went up when I increased production, but it didn't double. It just went up by about 20% or 25%. Direct labor was 17,000 at 10,000 units. I double the number of units that I produce, the cost for direct labor goes up double. Same with indirect materials. If I double the amount of activity, I increase double the activity, the cost doubles. But look at depreciation. I double the activity and the cost does not change. Therefore, that cost is a fixed cost. Utilities, I double the production. The cost does not quite double. So it is a variable cost and a fixed cost portion. Rent remains the same. So you see a mixed cost is a cost that has variable cost in it and fixed cost in it. And we can't work with that. We have to break it out into how much is fixed and how much is variable. And to do that, we use what's called the high-low method. That is, every cost that is a mixed cost has a fixed portion and a variable portion. But the difference in the cost between the high level of activity and the low level of activity, if the cost changed, that's the variable portion of the cost that change, because only variable costs change. So therefore, we have to analyze how that variable cost changes. If you want to look at it on a formula basis, then our first step is to look at the variable cost per unit. We look at the total change in costs with the changes in activity, and we look at the change in the activity. Now the change in cost, if the cost increased because the level increased, then it was the variable cost per unit that increased. For example, we have this Metro Transit company and they have kept track of their maintenance costs and their mileage. In January they did 20,000 miles, it cost 30,000. February they did 40,000 miles, it cost them 48. March 35,000 miles and total costs were 49 for maintenance. Well they've done that for six months. Now the high-low methods, you'd notice the cost is changing with the activity but look at the activity doubled from 20 to 40, but the cost did not double. So this cost is partly fixed and partly variable. Well, how do I figure out the variable portion? Well, I take the low activity, 20,000, and the high activity. And I take the cost at the low activity and the high. And I say, okay, look, the cost went up 33,000. The change in cost, the cost went up 33,000 when the mileage went from 20 to 50. So therefore, the change in cost, 33, and the high mileage, 50,000, minus the low mileage gives me the change in miles, the activity, and therefore, we say that for every mile, the cost would increase by $1.10. That's the variable portion of the cost. Now, that's not the total cost. The total cost at the high activity was 63,000, and at the low activity was 30,000. Now this is both a fixed cost and a variable cost. This is both a fixed cost and a variable cost. They both have elements in it. So we just figured out that the variable cost is $1.10 for every mile driven. Well if the total cost at 
at the high level, which is 50,000 miles, is 63,000. Then the variable cost must have been 50,000 times a dollar 10 or 55,000. If the variable cost is 55,000 and the total cost is 63, then the fixed cost must have been 8,000. If that's true, the same thing would be happening at the low. The total cost was $30,000 when I did 20,000 miles. Well, the variable portion of that would have been 20,000 times 110 or 22,000. And when I subtract that from the total cost, I get a fixed cost of 8,000. Of course, the fix remains the same at all levels of activity. So here we show that the fix is the same at the high level as it is at the low level. So now we know that we can predict the cost behavior in the future for a mixed cost. When we say, okay, the cost is going to be $8,000 per month plus $1.10 for every mile driven during that month. So in the next month, if I did 45,000 miles, I would estimate that the total fixed cost would be 8,000. This should be over here plus 110 times 45,000, and my total cost would be 57,500. So you see, we've taken the mixed cost, and with the high-low method, we've broken out the fixed portion and the variable portion. And we can also predict what the total cost, or not exactly, but we can estimate what the total cost would be at 45,000 miles. So this is the high-low method, which you must be familiar with that breaks out a mixed cost into its fixed portion and its variable portion.